Hey team, before we move on to the main workout of the video, I'd appreciate it if you did two things to help out this channel. Uh, first thing is to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, and also hit the like button. Just those two things, and now we can move on to the main item of the show. Hope you enjoy, and let me know what you're training today in the gym. Just to reassure you, I'm not going to make you watch four and a half minutes of me doing the air assault bike because that would be very, very boring at the start of a workout. And I think it was four and a half minutes. I'm going to go over how I found the workout and then I'm going to give you a few tips for exercise motivation because that has been a topic which has been very relevant with clients this week and people I've just been speaking to um, who are interested in resistance training. So with this workout... I was looking at the 81 calorie buy-in and um, buy-out and thinking, right, keep it a steady pace for the buy-in. A buy-in essentially means that you just have to do it to enter the uh, main portion of the workout, which is the five rounds of the eight pull-ups, 16 thrusters, 24 burpees and 60 double-unders. Um, but the buy, um, so the buy-in was conservative, then the buy-out was going to be a lot, lot faster just good because um, the finish line is in sight and you want to try and, and do it as fast as you can. But I didn't want to burn out too early because I've done that um, on a two kilometre row. I'll put a link to the video just here to the two kilometre row. I've done it too quickly in the past and then I've burnt out about three quarters of the way through and then I haven't been able to complete the rest of the workout. So with the air bike, I was quite, um, air assault bike, sorry, I was quite comfortable with that actually. Um, I kept it at a quite conservative pace. I was quite impressed with what my, what I managed to get in the end. I can't quite remember. I think it was about four and a half ish minutes or even below that. But I was puffing by the eighty end of the eighty one calories, um, which wasn't great entering the five rounds. But again, I'm still trying to mature as an athlete, and I need to get better at kind of keeping the pace more conservative and breaking down repetitions because the main part of this workout um the thrusters really got me i was not wearing the correct shoes i was wearing running shoes so my um heels weren't elevated elevated which didn't help but that's also an excuse um for my ankle mobility i need to get some proper metcons though because running shoes aren't ideal because with the thrusters um after speaking to my mate they should um have actually been about 9 kilos in each hand dumbbells wise but I chose a 45 kilo bar which obviously is a little bit heavier but I'm quite glad I did it in the end with a 60, a 45 kilo bar because it was nice to get the accumulation of volume um, but with the thrusters I was finding that I was leaning forward a lot and needing to drop the bar which wasn't ideal and I was trying to do 16 repetitions in a row really high sets um, and I really should have been what I did towards the end was doing sets of six. Um, I think I tried to do six, six, and six, but sometimes I had to do six, six, four, and two. Double unders, wasn't too impressed with today because I think under the influence of all of that fatigue, I started to struggle a bit. But some of the rounds, I managed to do the 60 in a row, which was good. The burpees, I wanted to try and get it a consistent pace for all 24. Sometimes in the last couple of rounds, I had to stop. And the pull-ups, I tried to do butterfly, but I think I need to work on my kipping and butterfly, especially under the influence of fatigue, because all the form just goes out the window. Uh, but this is things that I'm learning along the way, which you guys will also learn. And it's all part of CrossFit. It's fun. And it's good to test yourself in these types of workouts. And obviously the row, which you're going to see at the end, was disgusting. But I had to try and keep... I managed to keep a one... 44-ish pace per 500 metres on average. I was getting a, lot, a little bit faster towards the end, so I was quite impressed with that. Um, you'll see halfway through that um, I changed the camera just because I think it has a 20-minute uh, limit to how much it can film, so I just adjust the camera, and I adjust the time um, clock, clock that you're seeing on the screen, and then you see um, the camera just time out before the end of the run. But I get most of the workout, which um, is what I wanted. Now just a couple of tips of exercise motivation. I've personally gone down the route of CrossFit because um, there's a lot more sports and performance focus with it and you can do some competitions throughout the year. You can do some team competitions 
I'm aiming to do my first comp with a team as part of this Evolution Fitness Gym in the summer and then eventually do an individual comp in the future. I'm looking forward to trying my first Open, which I think will be in October this year. But then eventually I want to try and build myself up to doing a sanction event. So that's something that you need to think about. What motivates you in terms of sports? And what sport would you like to more focus on in regards to your resistance training? So if you're a runner, you could try building up your quadriceps, your hamstrings and your calves and think about your resistance training like that and aiming towards 10 kilometer races, half marathons, marathons depending on what kind of distance you want to go for. If you're a boxer, they do charity boxing matches in my local area um, every few months and that's something you can look into. Just think about the sports you're interested in and if they do amateur competitions locally. That is really, really um, good to have some accountability to other people and so you can aim towards a certain date or a competition and keep doing that throughout the year. That's really good for longevity with resistance training. Also with motivation, it's good to have accountability partners, so people you may train with or see at the gym, just so you know that you are having to check in with them every so often to see um, how, so they can see how you're progressing and then vice versa, you can see how they are progressing. And then on Instagram, although Instagram can be toxic in some ways because of you know how physiques are used um, and tapered with on clip art to make them look a little bit different to how they actually are in real life. There are some good bits about Instagram. For example, you can follow some people who are perhaps slightly further on in the journey than you. So in my case, if I'm somebody who wants to compete in a sanctioned event, I'm going to try and find some people on Instagram who have pot potentially done some sanctioned events already or who have competed at regionals in the CrossFit world. And I'm actually in touch with a, one guy in particular who has done that, and he's really helping me, um, especially with my ring muscle-ups at the moment. So that is something that you should think about in your given sport. I hope those tips were helpful. Just have a think about that, see how you can apply it to your life. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me because that's why I've done YouTube, because I love to log my own journey and hear about other people's journeys. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video.
If you made it this far into this video, thank you so much for your time. Give yourselves a pat on the back. And I send my kindest regards to you. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Boom. <laughs>